It's road trip day. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. And today is the day we take my cheap V8 Jaguar on its first adventure. It's a properly cold day for it too. Last night we had temperatures of around minus seven in the UK. And as you can see, the cat has been covered. So I'm sure you have lots of questions regarding firstly where we're going and also the state of the car. Is it fixed? Is that head gasket issue gone? And why are we taking it on a road trip? All will be explained shortly, but first, haha. -ha, we have the new number plate. So before we go anywhere, I'm gonna get that off the old one and fit this new oval shaped one. So the first thing to do then will be to pop the old one off, which should be nice and easy. Because if you watched my last video where we cleaned the car, I just stuck it on with some double-sided tape. As you can see, that's now off the car. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a wipe with this icy cloth just to dry it. And then the next thing to do is to get some sticky pads, of which I've got some here. And well, we'll just stick as many as we think we need to on here. I'm probably gonna say at least four. I think hopefully this should do it. We'll find out, won't we? But I'll make sure I get it right. Okay, and now the best bit, peeling off. Oh, oh, you're joking. I think it's secure now. We'll find out, won't we, today? Oh yeah, that looks so much better. I have actually got a new front one, although I need to drill out the old one and I don't have my drill with me, so we'll do that another time. But this is the main piece. I'm really happy with how that looks. So before I tell you more about today's journey specifically, let me just explain to you the latest on what's going on with the mechanical situation of this car. That involves popping the bonnet, of course. Oh, very icy, very, very icy indeed. And the coolant, that's what we're all thinking about. And well, if you follow me on YouTube, which you probably do watching this, but if you don't, make sure you do subscribe now. You would have seen on my community page, I did a little post showing this. As you can see, all of that pink liquid or pink residue in there is coolant and so indicates towards maybe a thermostat leak or a water pump or something. But in other words, there is a leak going on in there. That's no secret. And then we've got the coolant level itself in the expansion tank. Well, that seems to lose maybe a centimeter or so from that level every time I drive the car. So in other words, there is still a coolant leak uh, with the jack, of course, that's quite obvious but it's not ever so severe, or at least I don't think. So that's the reason for doing today's journey, really, to give it a proper run and uh, to sort of better ascertain exactly how bad this problem is. It doesn't really matter anyway, because I've booked it back in to a garage next week. Now I have actually booked it into the same garage, which you might all be thinking that's absolutely ridiculous if they couldn't see this. Although in their defense, that pink mess in there wasn't there when I first took them the car but at least they've had the car a few times now they're going to want to get it fixed this time because it's kind of embarrassing if they don't and um, also you know they're probably not going to charge me as much as if I take it to a new place so that's the reason for going back there they know the car and hopefully I'm giving them one more chance they can just sort it out what I will do though is a quick once over anyway so let's just check the oil level let's give it a wipe here And that all looks good. That's actually, I don't know if you can see, but that's basically on the maximum. So definitely not losing any oil. That's really good news. And I will just top off the expansion tank um, with a little bit of water just to get the coolant up to maximum. That gives us a good benchmark then when we arrive at our destination, hopefully later, uh, on how much or if we've lost any coolant. But anyway, we do actually have a ferry to catch with today's journey, so that adds some trepidy. But it also means I think we're running a little bit late, so I better go grab the bags, round up the troops, and we'll be on our way. So before we set off on this maiden voyage really for our Jaguar, there's one more thing I have to do and that is setting the sat-nav. 
Uh, so let's do this now quickly. Enter destination, and we're looking for town, quay or key road, Southampton. And that looks like it's actually got it. Being honest, I've used this a few times, and that'll be the first time the sat nav's actually had the destination that I want. Let's see, let's see what it says. If I zoom all the way out here, it should show us our journey in its entirety from here in Buckinghamshire, all the way across to Oxford, and then where? Going south to Southampton. It's got it! Fantastic! Okay, so now's probably a great time to explain where we're going. So, we're driving across the country today and ending up on a different portion of England's land because we're headed to... Continue for three tenths of a mile to the roundabout. I think that's going to be quite a recurring theme here while I'm trying to talk. In a quarter of a mile, enter the roundabout and take the fourth exit. So our first job is to head to Southampton, then we're going to jump on a ferry, the Red Funnel, across to East Cowes, and then we're most probably going to head to the southernmost point of the Isle of Wight or around Compton Bay on the gorgeous military road. All in all, a journey totaling only around 100 miles, but two things. One, this is the sort of maiden voyage for the Jag. It is a trip across the country in some way, shape or form. But also what you won't see is tomorrow when we actually drive the car home. So all in all, around 200 miles or so. As I mentioned, then the car goes into the garage on Monday. Today is Saturday and hopefully then gets all sorted. But let's just see how well it does on this journey. I'm, I'm quietly confident it's actually going to be okay because I showed it's only losing a little bit of coolant oil and everything seems to be fine so there's no real reasons to worry but i think this is a nice a nice a nice tester just a few minutes into the journey and no more than 30 miles an hour the average fuel is 14.6 miles per gallon 40.7 miles per gallon and counting i think our journey is a mix today of sort of b roads and then a bit of motorway I think by the time we get to the red funnel at Southampton, the, the ferry port, I think the average fuel will be around the high 20s, if not 30. Get your guesses in now, we'll, we'll see what it is. So because of the really cold night we had last night, the scenery sort of driving along these roads is gorgeous. It's just been spoiled by these bloody cyclists though. Get out of the way. This is why we have a V8. <laughs> But what I've done is I've just popped the car into sport here. I think it's just for the gearbox, I'm not too sure. Similar to my 99 Mercedes I used to have. And it seems to just work really nicely on these B roads. It's never having to sort of downshift for that bit of extra torque. It just always seems to have a way of finding it when I press this little S here. So quite happy with that, that seems to be working very nicely. But otherwise, I mean, you all know this. This Jaguar S-Type is such a wonderful place to be, particularly on a day like this where you just feel so sheltered from the elements outside. I've gone on about it enough, but the wooden steering wheel really goes a long way to help with that. It just feels so delicate and supple to drive. And obviously now that the iValet guys have had their hands on this car, inside it presents, I mean, it's just gorgeous. It doesn't feel at all like it's on 105,000 miles, more like, 105 miles it's really really wonderful now before we continue i'd like to just play you a few words from today's video sponsor that makes it possible for me to do these videos so thank you to carly for sponsoring today's video i thought i'd take the chance to have a little play around with my dad's new to him bmw1 series first thing to do then is to plug in the carly scanner to his obd port and then we're going to open the app up on my phone we're going to make sure we've got his car inputted so oh i've already got it here bmw 1 series 2011 cabriolet that is definitely his car then we're going to click connect it's all plugged in and this should just take a few seconds and we'll be ready to go so as well as being able to conduct diagnostic checks and code various features on certain cars with carly you can also do a used car check and i'm gonna start with that on my dad's car this, this is particularly useful if you're buying a car you can take your carly device with you and check these things at the dealership and one thing that's instantly good to know is that all the vin numbers match on the ignition on the lights and on the engine on this car if you're buying a car that's very important i now have a full report of my dad's car's mileage history which is not only interesting to see the miles it's done over the years but also great peace of mind knowing that it's not being tampered with 
a really nerdy little insight that it gives you as well is the build date on the engine, which I've got here, it was the 20th of December, 2010. As well as being able to run diagnostics and find fault codes on your car, you can very easily clear them with a click of a button using Carly as well, which can save you those unnecessary trips to the garage and therefore time and money. On my dad's BMW, there's 10 different modules that we can code using Carly. For example, I can code the dashboard to have a digital speedometer on it. Currently scrolling through the digital display, I've only got miles per gallon, average speed, range, and that's it. Yet with the click of just a few buttons, I've now got this display here, which says V equals, and then my miles per hour. How cool is that? With my dad's car being a cabriolet as well, I can code his key to be able to open and close the soft top roof with Carly. I could literally go on for hours with all of the things that are possible with Carly, but you should go and see for yourself. Check out the link below to go and see how to get yours and what you can do on your car. And if not your car, I think it can make a very good gift for someone this Christmas. Thanks so much again to Carly for sponsoring this video and making this entire project possible. Now let's get back to the Jag. Well, we're making fantastic progress. We're 38.8 miles into our journey with another 47 to go until we reach the Red Funnel Ferry and an average fuel consumption of 23.8 miles per gallon so far. We've only just really started the motorway stuff, so I think that's only gonna go up. So far, so good with the car. The temps are all still in the green and it's the first time I slash we've really driven this anywhere more than five miles on the motorway and at 70 miles an hour it's really resplendently quiet reminds me of my old BMW 7 series which was of course a much more expensive uh, variant of essentially a luxury saloon car questionable whether you can call this that but it certainly feels it because like I say it's very quiet despite the odd rattle here and there and the V8 is doing really nicely. It's got the power when you need it. It's quiet, but also when you step on it, I mean, that's that's really fast and sounds gorgeous. I do have cruise control as well, which is really nice. You have to select cruise control on, and then you just drive up to the speed that you want to hold it at. So let's get it up to 70 miles an hour and then I'm gonna press the minus button and it will then hold me at that speed. Now the actual plus button doesn't work, which is what I would do now if I wanted to increase the speed, but that doesn't work. So I just have to accelerate with my foot and then set it again. But I'm just having to have cruise control in the first place. It's good as well to really get some energy in the brakes with lots of sort of slowing down from 70 miles an hour and that sort of thing. It's basically lovely to finally take this car which I guess I've had probably for the best part of two months and finally taking it on a trip and touch wood of which there's a plentiful choice in here we're gonna get down to the Isle of Wight with no problem and probably get to the military road on the southern part of the island just in time to catch a really nice sunset god this thing's gonna look so good next to the sea with the sun going down behind it we'll make it i think i think we're going to be fine all is well touch wood well here we are pulling into sunny southampton i always love driving this last few miles to where the ferry goes from because you can just see all of the huge cargo and container ships off to the right at port and I, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. I should say usually as well because my fiance Katie, if you don't know already, her parents live on the island so we go over there quite a lot. We'll be staying there tonight but today we're heading all the way down to the south of the island to try and catch a lovely sunset and something I think we're going to be able to do without a problem because as you can see we're two hours into our journey and the needle on the water temperature has stayed dead center not had any issues at all we've averaged 25 miles per gallon okay maybe a little bit optimistic on the fuel economy but i really wasn't trying we've been cruising at good speeds lovely 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 drive so far so comfortable 
I'm really surprised um, how quiet it is in here. I, I guess I didn't quite realize. One great way of noticing is this. Press the horn. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> this sounds like the horn's coming from a different car, but I think that's just because of the insulation. Anyway, really, really pleased, really happy, and it looks like we're gonna make it, and I think, despite all this ridiculous traffic, I think we're gonna make the ferry, which will be even better. And look, there's a huge, it's the Queen Mary 2. That's the QE2. That's a really famous cruise ship. I think at one point, I don't know, I'll, I'll put some information on the screen now, but I feel like that was or is the biggest in the world. And I wouldn't be surprised looking at it. That is fantastic. Wow. There you go, that proves my point about how I love driving down here because you always see something really special. That is fantastic. Uh, here we are, pulling into Red Funnel as another Jag departs. And I, actually, I'm very surprised, I have to say. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, but I'm surprised we've made it without any indication of a problem whatsoever. Oh, this is where we have one problem. I don't have a working window. Sorry, I don't have a working window. Say again? I don't have a working window, sir. Thank you, cheers. That was deeply embarrassing. Lane number 10, did she say? There she is, the Red Osprey. Fantastic, from one boat to another. I'm dead chuffed with that, actually. I'm so happy we've made it. Good jack! <laughs> so we've averaged 24.1 miles per gallon, not helped by all that traffic at the end there. 37 miles per hour, pretty slow journey down, and 86 miles. And yeah, like I say, without a hitch, which does fill me with confidence because We've got maybe 15 miles or so to go on the Isle of Wight, the other end, when we get there, to get down to Compton Bay and to watch this gorgeous sun set. But yeah, we're here. This is this is brilliant. Very, very happy. I forgot for one second, I actually completely forgot, but I'm glad that that's still on. So I thought, <laughs> I thought it didn't stick on that well. I thought it might have fallen off, but it's still there. So when we get to the Isle of Wight, we've got to drive about, what is it, 16 miles? 16 miles, yeah, from East Cowes, where this ferry takes us, all the way down to the other side, the southwestern point, Compton Bay. It's gorgeous down there. This car's gonna fit right in. I think there might be a few Ford Rangers and some BMWs mixed in, but they're basically all, all the way over there behind that vessel as well. Brand new JLR products. And they all go on this Drive Green Highway and Volniersville Hempson, a terrible pronunciation, I'm sure. But anyway, they sail off to Baltimore in the States. And there's probably, I mean, there's got to be thousands of them all parked there. I think it's quite amazing, really. <laughs> on the Isle of Wight, in the Jag. It's made it across seas. So now we have a lovely drive down through the center of the Isle of Wight, and then to the beautiful coastline and the military road, which is a really, really lovely place. And I cannot wait to take this car there and show you. And I'll let you guys into a little secret about the Isle of Wight. So I mentioned that Katie, my fiance's parents, live here, but myself especially and we have genuinely grown to just love this place over the past year or so that we've been coming and so much so that we're actually getting married here next year which is wonderful but one of the things we want to include at our wedding is this Jaguar. Katie absolutely adores this thing 
and so much so that the plan is for her father to drop her off at the church on our wedding day in this very car. So actually having this Jaguar on the island for the first time is more significant than just having the Jaguar on the island. It represents something that we're looking forward to next year, of course. It also immediately feels like the right car for this environment. If any of you have ever experienced the Isle of Wight, no one drives faster ever than 25 miles per hour. And this Jag, although it is really lovely to whack it down again, let's go find second here and listen to this. <laughs> Although it is lovely to put your foot down in this car and listen to that roaring V8, it rewards you equally for driving it very soppily and very gently and very smoothly and slowly. And so here on the Isle of Wight, it's perfect because that's all you're ever gonna be doing. <laughs> Whoa! completely contradicting myself because I just found the traction control button and a nice big roundabout there and this thing does like to play. Oh believe it we are pulling now into the Compton Beach Compton Bay car park and the Jags made it and we've done 101.6 miles today good car and so here we are then about three well probably four hours actually after we left Buckinghamshire we're now on arguably one of the most gorgeous places. Well, it's gotta be one of the most gorgeous places in the country, right? But certainly on the Isle of Wight, it's up there for me at least. And somewhere behind those clouds is I'm sure a wonderful sunset. But yeah, I mean, you can't beat this view. And the Jaguar made it without a hitch. I know it's only hundred miles, but we do have to do hundred back tomorrow, of course. And it's just the start for this car because I have some much bigger adventures planned and now we get to look at this gorgeous that's a lovely color what is it vw sharon she's also joined us here for this momentous occasion but anyway this is great i'm so glad the jags made it it's really really fantastic news and i hope you guys have enjoyed this video nonetheless make sure you subscribe because there will be more content coming with this but there's a few other things going to be coming first whilst this one gets sorted next week in the garage so thank you all for watching make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and i'll see you very very soon